Hello, welcome back. I'm Tanya from Tanya's Witchy Kitchen. And how are you doing today? As a young mother, when my girls were really little, I had a cousin who would give echinacea tincture to her children. Like every time they sneezed wrong, literally she would give it to them. And I never, I just knew it was this great, you know, immune booster thing, but I wasn't into the herbal world yet. And so I was like, mm, you know, let it go, you know, in one ear, out the other. And um, not that she ever said much about it. She would just, you know, you know, they sneezed wrong and I'd be like, oh, you need some tincture, you know. And so um, I never knew what it was. I never looked up the plant, okay. However, growing up on the farm, I always saw those beautiful purple flowers and just loved them. So imagine my surprise um, when I really started delving into herbal uh, remedies and things like that to discover that echinacea was actually those beautiful purple flowers that seemed to grow up everywhere in my neighborhood. Um, and so that is what, so today, hello, welcome to Herbal Spotlight. <laughs> our, our spotlight is on echinacea and I just want to, I do comment this in the video. Echinacea is almost, I don't know, is there an endangered plant list? I think there is actually, and it is close to being over harvested. So with all the properties it has, if you're going to buy it or if you're going to accumulate it, one, either grow it in your garden, it's very easy to grow, or two, buy it from a cultivated source meaning they grow it specifically to sell. If somebody is selling it on Etsy and they're saying it's wild, you know, maybe don't buy it just because you don't know if they are growing it to harvest it. Unless they say so, but you know. I, however, did not buy it. I am actually harvesting it from, or yeah, harvesting, is that what they call it? I am actually, <laughs> It is harvest time. I'm actually taking it from the field, but literally my husband actually um, cut around this big spot because he saw the flowers and he just continued cutting hay in the rest of the field and then brought me out there so that I could pick um, to my heart's content. But anyway, it's um, it was really nice of him to do that. And so, yeah. I'm not buying it from a cultivated source. I'm actually harvesting it myself. However, it would have been cut anyway. They're cutting hay, it's in a hay field. So it's all this wild natural pasture grass and all these gorgeous flowers and just crazy stuff. But that's, so it was getting cut anyway, okay? I don't really ever harvest the roots. Um, I just feel I don't need that. I can work with the leaves and the flowers and the the mm, seed head, okay? So anyways, I'm not gonna sit here and chit chat to you. I'm gonna take you to the video right away. So three things, dream big, be true to you, you are worth it. And let's go check out all this stuff on echinacea. So we are talking about echinacea. Um, echinacea is part of the Asteracea family. Um, it is called the purple coneflower or the hedgehog coneflower which is very easy to see. The whole plant can be used, the flowers, the roots, and the leaves, not the stems. Split the heads before drying. Echinacea is a cooling and drying herb. It is very pungent. Some of the medicinal properties are it's antimicrobial, it's an immuno immunomodulator, it's antifungal, it's anti-inflammatory, antiviral. Um, it will make you salivate. Um, that's the way to know if you have a good tincture. You won't drool like a two-year-old, but there is some zinging going on in your mouth and sometimes it's a little numbing, so don't be shocked. And most of all, it stimulates the immune system. It helps move stagnant and swollen lymph. It heals infections. Uh, especially like reoccurring boils, acne, you know, those skin infections, helps with infected wounds, cuts and scrapes. Now you can take it internally or use it externally as a tea wash for, 
skin conditions. It's great for a mouthwash. It helps with tooth infections, bleeding gums, gingivitis, um, those things. Um, rattlesnake bites. You still want to go to the hospital. However, if on the way, it would be a great idea if you had one to two ounces of echinacea tincture <laughs> that you could take on the way. Echinacea actually inhibits the enzyme, the tissue destroying enzyme found in venomous bites and stings. Snakes, lizards, scorpions, bees, caterpillars, and spiders. Wow, who knew? Um, it's great for sore throats. Echinacea purpurea, purpura, um, actually is active against strep throat. Where have you been all my life? Um, <laughs> you can use echinacea to uh, treat uh, bacterial and viral infections. Start it in the early phase. Great for upper respiratory allergies. Actually helps reduce the severity of asthma attacks and is great for bronchitis. Guess who I'm going to try this on? Uh-huh, we all know. Um, great for urinary, urinary tract infections. Uh, you can mix that with golden seal and make a really potent tincture. Um, actually, you can use it cosmetically. Um, you infuse your oils and it's a great skin toner. Um, it is generally regarded safe for consumption. Allergies are rare. Um, contradictions may be, it might affect people with autoimmune conditions and do not take internally long term. Okay. And now to our mouthwash. Um, first of all, these, most of my herbs are all dried. Okay. The, <laughs> those are from 2022 and they're still as pink as the ones I just picked. Um, the flowers in the jar. Um, my seed heads probably are not totally dry because, um, you know, I'm just cutting them up now. But um, as far as the rest of it goes, um, all the herbs are dried, okay? So we've already talked about why echinacea is so beneficial for oral health. And so I am putting 11 grams of echinacea. And it's the seed heads, the leaves, and the, the flower petals. Just the combination of those three. Our next ingredient is going to be peppermint. Six grams of peppermint. Why? It's antibacterial and anti-inflammatory and can prevent oral infections and possibly stop um, future bacteria growth, which is for a lot of these. You have to understand a lot of the things I'm putting in here have so many more benefits than what I'm just saying, okay? <laughs> I can't list them all in a short video. I had to switch jars because my other jar was too small. But the next ingredient is going to be calendula. And calendula we are using for wound healing, um, specifically oral lesions in your mouth. Very beneficial for that. Um, I do cut the, the little flowers in half because they they are kind of um, hard, you know. If you don't just have petals, I have the whole flower. So I cut them, cut them in half, okay? And our next ingredient you'll probably find in your yard, unless you're a person that, you know, puts Roundup all over and kills everything in your yard. It's plantain. <laughs> plantain is great for wound healing it's great for toothaches, and it's great for swollen gums. Yeah, people really kill a lot of the plants that they have in their yard. Um, the next is one gram of yarrow, um, which helps stop bleeding. So if you are a brusher and you have a lot of bleeding gums, you know, this can help stop the bleeding. Our next one is gota cola, which I about half to one gram. And like I said, these ratios are just mine. You can definitely add more. Go to cola is great for wound healing also. It's beneficial to the skin and you know, all the benefits. The next one is sage. I should have put more sage in here. <laughs> I put one gram of sage approximately. Sage is great for toning 
Um, tones the tissues. It's good for pain relief, mouth ulcers, canker sores, bleeding gums, all those things. Chamomile is another thing I should have put more in there. I have two grams. It's great for bleeding gums caused by gingivitis. Um, it helps with teething and pain. The last one is my Spilanthes. I love these. Great for canker sores, oral. It's an oral antiseptic. Uh, gum disease, tooth decay. If you pack it into a tooth or the side of your cheek, it will numb everything, including your tongue. So <laughs> this mouthwash is a zinger. That's what I'm going to tell you. Between the Spilanthes and the Echinacea, it's a zinger. But the... <laughs> The next ingredient we're adding is vodka. I am adding 100% vodka to this recipe. Um, you could do a 75 alcohol, 25% distilled water, but that is leading up to a tincture, but the whole point of that would be to um, um, release the components that are, release the components in the herbs that are, you know, that will come out with the water, not just the alcohol. But the alcohol's a lot more potent, and I'm just using straight alcohol on this. Um, to use, well, wait, wait. First, you have to shake it daily for the first week. You might have to top it off with more alcohol, and you want to infuse it at least four weeks. To use it, you take 20 drops of this into one tablespoon of water and you swish for 30 seconds up to 20 minutes. And if you're looking for a really great toothpaste to complement this mouthwash, check out my cinnamon video. I will post it in the links below. And in there you will find a toothpaste whitening herbal. Awesome. And there you have it, our herbal spotlight on echinacea. I hope you had a good time. Thank you for dropping by, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.